So we'll do that. So hi, everybody. Uh, if you're watching the replay, this is going to be um, recorded just so you can uh, watch it later if you need. Um, we're going to be discussing some practices about onboarding. It's going to be an open conversation so everybody can pop in and join, but I'm going to show you the, the calm guy that I just created. We lost somebody. I don't know who. Um, oh, here's Joanne. Kathy's. Joanne, we lost. Well, hopefully she'll come back in. But I wanted to start, as we always do in our Mighty Mastermind today, uh, with wins. So who is excited to share a win for today? Since my microphone is on already, I'll go. <laughs> hey everyone, um, win. Oh, I had an amazing meeting with my business advisors um, last week or about 10 days ago and came to a conclusion which way to take my online courses. And I'm really excited and a little bit nervous kind of, but I think it's a good, good thing like to have that little butterflies. That means you're going out of your comfort zone, but on the other side of it, it's going to be like fucking awesome. So that's my win. Another thing I'm excited this Sunday, I'm taking my niece and nephew to Palm Springs at 111 dry heat, but it's going to be fun. Um, our annual vacation with my niece and nephew. So those are my wins. Nice. That's great. Uh, for me, a win is um, I went through a women's business program and I formed a, a connection with a colleague and she started a community for therapists. And actually, she's just launching her Mighty Network next week because I told her all about Mighty Networks. But um, she, in working with her therapist, she discovered they need help with marketing and communication. And I have an online community for marketing and communication freelancers. So we're working on a partnership. We're doing a pilot project where my freelancers will provide uh, marketing communication services for her therapists. And so it's a win for both of us because it attracts people to her community. They want to join for the perk of working with us. And it attracts people to my community because they're going to get work out of it. So. Congratulations, Sandra. And I saw that and I'm, I'm in your community and I saw that note and it sounds so interesting and I'm excited to see how that um, pans out for, for your community. Super exciting. Okay, Kara, welcome. We're just sharing our wins at okay, the moment. I gotta check my settings. Okay, well, I can hear you, but so... who else we got? Joanne, you got a win? Yeah, so uh, one win is that uh, my husband and I are on our way to pick up my son from his first uh, sleep away camp for two weeks. So I'm excited to see how he's going to react to her. He reacted to it. And then um, on the business side, um, I launched a community for writers who wander. Um, and in the end, I got 13 people. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm gonna, you know, spend a little bit more time with them, and then I'm gonna open the doors up again. So I feel, uh, I feel really good about um, the people who joined and what we're starting there. Thanks. Who's next? Peter. Peter. Kathy. Okay. Care. I go? I, I've been continuing to work on brainstorming my ideas for a potential relaunch from September. Uh, as a reminder, I'm, I'm going away for a, for a more or less a month to a very quiet island, although there'll be some very noisy kids there. There'll also be quiet times, hopefully. Um, and my win this week is I've been, been uh, kind of doodling and brainstorming and uh, mind mapping the po three possible ideas for a new a new topic, if you like, a new um, area for me to launch in. And I'm pretty sure I found the one I'm going to work on. I'm now kind of just trying to gel the idea. Um, the, the working title is Surviving Retirement. So that's not just about um, finance, although that could be part of it. And obviously, I'm not an expert on that, but I have got some experience. But it's also, it's about, it is the, the whole the whole thing. So based on my own personal experience, my own journey over the last couple of years, as it's just, I'm just passing 
I've just passed the um, second year anniversary of me finishing full-time work. And um, I've been getting um, pangs over the last couple of months, really, on and off pangs of like feeling like I don't have a purpose again, which is which wasn't good. So a lot of it's about helping people from pre-retirement through the, the planning and thinking and expectation stage and into the actual retirement and obviously then you know thriving in retirement itself so I'm starting to think about what's the journey and one of the things I've learned I hope I've learned from my genealogy work membership I should say is that I didn't really have a very common journey that everybody would go through for genealogy it was quite an individual thing and it was more about me helping doing research for people which is I'll still carry on doing and on the side quieter but the retirement thing I think has um, legs because there are so many aspects you know there's every, everything to do with um, keeping busy family and friends health uh, obviously wealth uh, and what I've just called getting to peaceful getting to be, being at, at peace with okay this is me now because going, particularly going from a very busy corporate life, which I know Deb has, for example, and maybe some of the others have here, into suddenly, as I was listening to someone else's um, um, uh, podcast the other day, where she said, well, the moment when she realised what was happening was when she gave her laptop back, her work laptop. And suddenly she didn't have any more meetings. She didn't have to worry about the budget. She didn't have to worry about personnel issues or the team or meetings or meetings next week or any planning suddenly she had an em empty, well, empty diary, and that is at risk of being an empty life. Anyway, so that's, I'm, I'm forming my ideas around that as a theme. I've got a couple of backups just in case, but I think that one has um, some good promise, and I hope it can be something I can genuinely help people with, you know, based on my own experience um, and forming a, forming a community around that. So we'll see. I haven't decided whether it's free or paid for yet. <laughs> I haven't got to that kind of stage, but I've just started to think about what, what I might be able to form as a, as a membership and then maybe what else, I, uh, what other tools I might need to, to drive it. So that's me. Cool. Awesome, Peter. Thank you. A uh, quick share for Carol or Kathy. I don't know if Kathy's around, but I see Carol. I'll go ahead. Um, my win is I just keep showing up every day and making progress no matter how small or big, seems to be incremental steps these days, just showing up every day. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> truth, speak truth. That's showing up, the first step. Yep. And the win. Awesome. Okay. Everybody shared, right? Except for, oh, here's Kathy. Uh, <laughs> hey guys. Um, well, my win is I'm at, I'm one away from 50 members in my uh, membership. So I'm excited to cross that, that threshold. Um, and I think I'll do that this weekend. I have uh, two virtual meetups where I, you know, recruit members from uh, on Saturday. So I'm pretty sure I'll get at least one new member from there. And um, the nonprofit is on its way. I Oh, and another one, <laughs> I am now, I have now five volunteers. So I have like a team for the first time that I'm trying to coordinate. And that's a whole new experience for me is um, kind of being the leader of, of a team. So that's my one. That's so awesome. Congratulations. Sounds so exciting. Very cool. Um, my wins are I have paid members in the Find Calm Here community. They are, are seven members. A couple of them are still on the free trial, but um, I've had some that are, are have renewed and paid. And then I have one person that is in a this new member to Find Calm Here that is in the Calm Corner, which is the new space that I opened up for clients who were asking about some kind of partnership around a recurring ability to connect with me with a strategy session where they don't have to like pay for the whole strat, like have that higher price point. So this is, um, Peter had suggested about, uh, a while ago when I did my growth seat about, um, a higher level. And so I kind of worked with that and 
it tweaked it over the last couple of months, but I knew I didn't want to focus on that until after I focused on the first launch with the, the membership. So I'm um, just opening that now and reaching up to a few clients that I worked with in the past, just to see if I can bring them into the community. Now that I've got lots of content, I changed the, um, Membership now, it's a one month free trial instead of two months because there was tons of content and I'm going to do that until September, August or September. I haven't decided yet. And then I'm going to have it just be all paid. If I can come here, be all paid. Um, and there's different levels and different offerings. So with that being said, I'm going to kick off the conversation. We, when our poll um, that we did a while ago, I guess back in, in May, we had talked about some topics and I took those topics and based on feedback from you in the Mighty Mastermind and from other people that I've worked with, like with the discovery calls or in the community, I came up with the calm guides and I kind of shared with those a little bit with you in some other sessions. But what I want to do today, I put together a calm guide for onboarding. It's a it's going to be part of a three three sections, and this is the first section, and I'll show it to you. I do have it in the community. So let me just flip this. Okay. Yeah, I'll see my screen. Yes. Okay. So the um, the calm guide is over in the resources section I upgraded to the business plan. I had I had downgraded from the business plan to the community plan back in the early beginning of the year because I wasn't using all the features of the business plan. And I was just like, this doesn't make sense until I can figure it out. And so that's why I took the last six months to really figure out what my plan was gonna be for the Money Network. And so that's why I changed the, the format. But I, I went back after talking with some people, Carol, that not Carol C, but Carol D was telling me um, that I should just go for, go for it and start building these courses, which are actually guides is what I'm calling them. So these are the first two guides that I've created. I had, a, I have a roadmap actually that I just put in just so you're all aware. I have a roadmap that I just put in find calm here that shows where I'm going with this, my thoughts. And this is all based on feedback from you and from other people, from clients and things like that about what would be helpful to help you like streamline your community building process and make it less stressful and easier for you to like get the clarity you need to move forward and not be stuck. And so the first one is to launch because you have to start somewhere and launching is the first place that people ask me about support. And so that guide is up. I have a workshop coming up uh, in the middle of July on the 15th that I have a two hour workshop that you can poke in um, at any time and uh, tell me, give me feedback on that because I want to really make it really great so that then I can go and offer it as a product, a digital product uh, in August. That's my plan at this point. And everybody has free access to it as of now that's in the community. I'm going to close it probably at the end of July. Um, that's my plan at this point. I'm still working on figuring out pricing. So if you all have feedback, let me know. So that's the, the one that I just did. I worked with um, a couple people and we're having a workshop on. The next one is the one that we're doing today, which is the onboarding contribution and growth. Um, I, did, I did section one and believe me, I just built this two days in the last two days. Like I was up till 10 o'clock at night, like building this. So um, that'll come. And then in September, I'm gonna be digging more into the tech integration. Um, side of things. And we're gonna, we do have a workshop on that in July as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in July happening. I actually just had one of my people that's in a different mastermind that I'm in agree to do a marketing, a community marketing workshop. So that's in the community. So just note for that. Um, there's, I know July is a travel month, so, but there'll be replays on all of this stuff. Um, if you're, you know, busy traveling or whatnot. Um, okay. So we wanted to talk about onboarding and I don't know if any of you, does anybody have an onboarding plan like that's written out that they follow like a process? No. No. Well, this is good. And you guys can unmute if you have questions, just let me know as we go along. And if you have something to contribute, like what you do as far as like how you onboard people and that's helpful to share to the conversation, then interrupt me, please. Um, but this is 
the overview of the column guide. Um, and like I said, I just did the, the first section in the last two days. So I'm gonna work on these next sections, the um, connecting conversation and then the growth of your money network. So those are the, that's the outline. But um, what we're doing is section one, which is creating your onboarding plan. And I have it broken up into three or into five steps. So the first step is like just identifying what onboarding is, um, selecting your onboarding method, identifying your onboarding process, creating your plan, and then going beyond the invitation. So those are the different steps that I have. I broke them out. You can see there's a video for each one of those, except for the last one. I didn't get to do a video last night because it was 10 o'clock and I was getting tired and I'm like, this is not a good time to do a video. <laughs> so I'll do one later for that one. Um, but the first one, what is onboarding? I know we uh, had a workshop back in February and we talked about onboarding and creating contribution in that workshop. So some of this might be familiar to you um, from that workshop because I, I basically went back to the, the slide deck that I did for that workshop and really pulled some content from that and then refreshed it with some new resources that I found as well as what I've learned since February because I've learned a lot since Feb just since February. Um, so what I have here is broken up into the calm method um, of getting, getting clear on why you would want an onboarding process. And basically the reason I think it's important and you can take this for what you will is to have a clear reason of understanding why your members are joining, what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it, and what the benefits are for them connecting to a group of people inside your network and why that's so important as a group. Because when you establish those things in the very beginning, they'll understand why it's important to connect and continue with you. So just getting clarity. Um, and I say about a couple different things that you can do as far as the clarity portion, and that could be welcome posts and the our purpose. Um, that are templates in the money networks. Um, you could have live events. You could have um, emails, a lot of different ways to kind of do onboarding. We're going to get into the onboarding methods in a little bit. Um, paying attention to potential and current members. Um, starting here, I learned that I needed to start here for people or I needed somewhere for them to go. Um, understanding like what your members, where they are on their stage and being aware of how they learn, those are all parts of awareness. Um, learning what you need to, to figure out as far as what's important and what's not. And, you know, just discussing different ways to like get started. And the testing phase in the motion part is super important, like to have te beta testers to kind of work through any kinks of your onboarding plan or process when in the beginning. So that way, you know, and even if you're like, you've already launched, like all of you have communities already, obviously. So you can do all of these things with the current members that you have. That's what I'm doing. Actually, I'm like refining it with you and with the other members of Find Calm here as I go. So I have some resources here uh, that are links to articles that you all can look at later. Does anybody have questions just about what onboarding is or anything about this, this step before I move on or comments that any feedback you wanted to share? Um, I'm listening to business of belonging. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned in that book was, um, that you want to set your members up for contribution right away and how critical that is. And so that really tuned me in on, okay, I can't ne neglect my onboarding, onboarding process anymore. And that just got me thinking about, okay, well, how can I provide my members super simple tools and describe things that will motivate them to contribute and um, have in mind right from the beginning, I'm going to be a, a valuable member of this community. Yep. That's great. Great point. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that in some of these methods. I'm moving to step two. I know we don't have a whole lot of time and I want to make sure to give you, you, you all time to, to share things. So if there is something that you, I did give you the slide deck, by the way, it's in the mighty mastermind group and it is, um, and all the content is in my, in fine calm here. So like you can have access to all that stuff. 
um, later if you wanted to look more into that and check out the resources. So, um, okay, so now that we know what onboarding is, why it's important, um, we're looking at what is your method and how do you determine what the best method, me best method is for you and your community? So I go over, and these are terms that I literally just kind of put together myself. There are some things that I learned from my research. Um, and then there's things that I just kind of, I don't know if they've already been mentioned somewhere in this term, but this is what I'm calling them. <laughs> um, so the video walkthrough is pretty common as a onboarding tool for buddy network hosts. They create like, uh, they record their screen, just like we're doing now a share screen and they're navigating. Here's where you get the course content or here's, um, where you can, you know, the activity feed. And that's where you share your, your worksheets for the week, or that's where you share the content or cheer people on. Um, my take on that is it does seem a little impersonal when you're doing it for like, just as in it's like at your welcome, um, it can be personal, but it can also feel a little like robotic, <laughs> I guess. Um, and a little too like, so it depends. Again, this is really where you have to know your members and know yourself. Like if you're not interested or wanting to like be on camera or instruct people in that way, cause that's not the way you learn, then don't <laughs> do that. But if it's like, you've been told by your members, they really appreciate that kind of instruction because you've asked them then, then totally do that. So it's like a, it depends on really on your, yourself and your community. Um, so that's one is the video walkthrough. And then the second one that I list here is orientation packet. Not a lot of, they, a lot of people reference this as just orientation, but I, I'm thinking of it more as like a, if you're a new employee, right, you get a packet that says, here's your employee packet. And here is all the orientation and the things you need to do. And I've seen this work for a lot of communities that are more um, maybe uh, structured in a way so that members have more really structured start here. Here's the, you know, here's the first thing we're going to do. Here's what's important. Um, and it's like a PDF that they can print out and physically have in front of them, or it's, um, you know, including worksheets and things like that. Um, and, you know, resources around here is what, how you do that could also include screenshots of like, okay, here's where the course, you know, you screenshot the money network and you say, here's where the course is like with an arrow, like, you know, go over to the left, navigate to the course section and then click on it could each, each be like, you could each give them in that packet, like screenshots. I've seen that really work well because some people learn. And I talk a little bit here about learning styles. I am not an expert in any way. <laughs> learning styles, but I read an article and this is what I found was really relating. The video walkthrough is really good for verbal and auditory learners. Obviously the orientation packet is good for like visual people that need like photos or, or, um, maybe like templates or things like that, but it's also good for people who want to learn by themselves and they can take their time and they can sit and they can look through a PDF or, or a packet on their own when they have the time. And then there's logical learners that they need that specifically step-by-step -step in a more organized fashion. Um, so that's what's good for the, you know, those kinds of learners. There's an article at the bottom here that talks about learning styles that goes a lot more in depth with that. So if that's something of interest to you, I put that re research or the resource there that I use to kind of come up with these. The other one is learn by doing. This is really great for physical and social learners. So people that really enjoy participating, if you're like, you've got a lot of extroverts in your community, if they really like to connect online, like me, like I love talking to people. I could talk to people all day until I'm like zoomed out <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, you know, this could be a great way to connect your members. This goes right to what Sandra was talking about with really focusing on connecting them in the very beginning to each other. And you can create really powerful bonds, as you know, very quickly in a small cohort. And if you do breakout rooms and if you do like all of these events that I did last year with FindCom here, we're really striving to create this connection with these groups of people who all had interests in wanting to like find calm in some way. And I met through that process of doing all these workshops last year, I met so many people and some of these people are now my best friends. 
And it's because I met them in a Zoom room for two minutes once and then later performed a relationship. So I just wanted to express how powerful it can be to get people, you know, on an online community together in a Zoom call or however you can, you know, if it's different platform you use, whatever. Um, But you can actually ask them step by step, has everybody logged in? Does everybody know where we're, the course content is? You can ask them as you're going. You can show them, like sharing your screen, but in a live format where you can actually make sure that they're all doing it along with you. And if they have questions, then you can just answer them right on the spot. They don't have to reach out to you later. Like a recorded video, they would have to reach out to you later and say, hey, I didn't understand this one step. Um, so that's, and then you could have a welcome party. Um, there's a lot of other I put an article down here about uh, interactive walkthroughs that um, help with onboarding. There's games that you can play to make it fun. Tons of really fun stuff that you can do um, right in the beginning to connect those members in an awesome way and get them to know like what your community is about. And that, that gives you an opportunity like in a live situation to answer any questions if you're doing a course or a cohort so that you know, like, hey, here's the journey we're going to go for, you know, five weeks or whatever the time frame is. Uh, the other one is concierge. This is the one I've been using. Um, good for like people, like solitary people, verbal, auditory learners, people that you want to personally reach out to. If you have a smaller community or you're really wanting to have good connections with these people, obviously you want everybody to stay in there, hopefully for a while, not to just pop out like the next month and them not keep paying you and, and then not getting value. And so establishing right away, like what's going to give them value and personally getting a connection with, with that person not only allows you to make sure you're addressing that they're in the right place and that you can help, you can help them with whatever it is that they're needing help with. And that, that that's going to happen in the community and that they need those people that are in the community and ha- you know, like how do they fit with those other people in the community? And that might be something, you know, they're like, well, you know, who else is here? Like, who else could I connect with? So those are things like to consider when you're, you know, it, I understand people that are watching this. I know that nobody here necessarily has hundreds of thousands of people in their <laughs> money networks right now, one day, hopefully, but, um, if you have like 50 or 100 people that you're onboarding all at the same time, obviously a concierge might not make sense for you. Um, but I would say if you're starting with a small launch, soft launch, like we talked about in the launch guide that I just put out, or if you're doing a relaunch, or if you're wanting to just work with like a few key people that you want to bring in, I think that's a really good way to connect, as well as you get their feedback immediately. And (laughs) you can use the words and the language that they describe. Every time you talk to a member, it's an opportunity to take that language and use it into your copy. So every time you hear a member say, I struggle with this, I'm stuck in this, I'm feeling this, I need help here. Those are all like, all those things you can use towards your pain points when you're expressing them on your sales pages and in your um, benefits of how you're solving those problems in your community, as well as why they need a community to do so. Um, so those are just really key points about like the concierge is, I feel like a really powerful one, but again, it's not the solution for everyone. Deborah, just so, a quick thought on that. Uh, yeah. Before you got the concierge, I was already thinking with the video mm-hmm. in particular, just even if, um, obviously it can be time consuming to do personalized video, but even if you do 30 to 60 seconds, where you'll basically say as an introductory beginning of the video, saying, you know, here's the, here's the main video for your, your onboarding, um, you, personalizing, just saying that person's name on video is very, very powerful. So you could do it even if you had scripted it and you say the same thing, but you say, hi Deb, I just want to let you know, I'm sending you this onboarding videos, uh, two or three videos to look at that, you know, and just like talk through like as an introduction, you could do it in 30, 45, 60 seconds. And I know that for very large cohorts, which as you say, I certainly don't have, I don't know if anybody does, but if you were talking about on- onboarding dozens of people at a time, there are, you know, obviously software solutions for integrating that kind of stuff as well. So uh, that just a thought, making, making it, it's like a magnet, isn't it? To pull, to pull, pull the member in, hopefully. If you do yeah. it properly, but I, a, I've, never done it, I've never done it properly. So, 
That's a great but, suggestion. And I've been really thinking a lot more about this. In fact, I just I was on a walk this morning, but right before this call, and I thought, man, I should have reached back out to this person and actually done a video reply um, instead of like a text reply and in an email. I think, wow, that would have been really powerful if when she had reached out to me and my reply back to her was, hey, so, thank you so much for connecting back with me. That would have been way power, think, more powerful I, than me just saying, thanks for like reaching back out, you know? I honestly think with my 70 members that I had through on through my door for genealogy, free members even, um, if I had gone that one extra step and may, had a video call or just, even just sent a video by email of, of one minute, two minutes, um, I'm sure it would have increased the stickiness of the members and the number number of people that converted to converted from what is this thing to, oh, that's quite good. Because it's also putting me across because the membership is about you as a host, ultimately. And so yeah. it's a part, it's, a, it's your first opportunity to make an impression, I guess. First impression, you know, the, they make their mind up in the first 30 seconds anyway. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great point. I think, you know, no matter where you are in the process of your community building, you can always implement these things. You can always just start. And not only that, but I could actually reach back out to the person anyway. There's nothing stopping me from like reaching back out and saying, hey, I just wanted to, you know, connect again or something. Maybe I'll wait a little bit. I won't do it like this week because I already emailed her back, but maybe I'll follow up on Monday with her. You know, there's nothing that stops me from like, okay, I can decide to do it later. Like, or I can reach out to members that I haven't reached out to. And maybe I do that. Maybe they're not responding to me in my messages. And if I send them a, a video message or a voice message, then they're going to respond. You know, maybe that's another way for me to like get to somebody because sometimes not get to them, but you know what I mean? Like just get feedback from them because I feel like sometimes the negative unconscious thoughts, the nuts, uh, negative unconscious thoughts come running in my head of saying, maybe it's me, you know, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe it's like, they don't like my content or I'm not good enough. And I just have the, all these negative, I think, uh, you know, I talked about with um, my friend on the podcast yesterday or on Wednesday about um, just imposter syndrome of like fear of like putting stuff out in the world. And I think all of us can relate to like some point where you're just like, I don't know if I should even be doing this. Like, who am I? All those kinds of thoughts. Um, as Mighty Network hosts, I'm sure we all kind of kind of relate to that at some point in your business or professional life. So I feel like that's super um, powerful to just to just recognize, like we can just always just try again and do our best. Um, cool. Uh, next. Step three. So identifying our process. So the process and the plan are going to be two different things. I, I don't want to get you too confused here, but the process is like identifying. So far, we've identified like what onboarding is, the methods of onboarding, which we just talked about. And now we're putting it together to create your unique process. And you have to think about these. These are the kind of the, the bullet points that I wanted to bring up, like the time you have to create an onboarding process, like the actual time that you have in your life. Um, knowing what your learning styles are for your members. So we talked a little bit about that. If you haven't done like discovery or ideal member interviews, uh, or, if, or if you haven't talked to some members in a little while, it might be good to reach back out and say, Hey, I just wanted to chat with you. Is this worksheet helpful? Is this thing help that I'm doing helpful? Um, getting testers for your onboarding. That's another process. Like who would you reach out to? Do you know somebody that you could reach out to? Or is that somebody already in your mind? Um, and there's a checklist. So this is um, just going through the identifying a method, which we talked about earlier. And then I'm just uh, going to looking at like, who do your, who, do your members enjoy connecting during social events? Do they like watching instructional videos? Do they want to read a manual? or resources, is that what they want? Because like sometimes we kind of create things and, and then think it's gonna be helpful, but then it's confusing because people maybe don't use all the resources we're creating. Um, and then what's necessary to learn? Like maybe I need to learn something before I create, before I start on my onboarding plan. Like before I start onboarding people, what do I need to learn? Like right now I know that I wanna start creating an email sequence, but that's something I don't know and that's, 
been a roadblock for me. I'm like, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time to learn this right now. And then I just switch email providers. So now it's a whole another level of, I don't even, this is all, I kind of knew what to do in ConvertKit, but now I'm in send, send in mail and it's a whole different thing, but I'm prioritizing that in my onboarding plan. Um, Who's your new mail provider? Time. Sorry. Go ahead. Who's your new mail provider? Send in mail. Send in oh, blue. Okay. Send, send in blue. blue. Sorry. Thank you. I just, Carol. I just, I just switched and I, I haven't um, switched totally. I'm still using MailChimp, but I, I, I did get that deal off of AppSumo and. Did you? Yeah. So we may have to compare notes as we're learning send in blue. <laughs> oh, okay. I am loving it. I got to say it's, it's a mobile, it's a more mobile friendly email service. I started it and I have, I started it two months ago as a trial. They have a free trial that actually provides you with a lot of the stuff that ConvertKit's paid plan gave me. So I got a bunch of stuff for free. So I got off of ConvertKit like a month ago um, after I converted all my, all my leads over, all my emails over to uh, send it in blue. But I like it because it's mobile. It's just visually it's mobile first, um, but it has desktop. You can compare desktop to like how the, the visuality of it. Um, it gets tons more open rates and there's more, there's more ability for um, analytics that are a little bit more to me helpful than what ConvertKit was giving me. And I just like it better. Um, the reason I switched wasn't because I was looking for another email provider. Actually, it was because I was updating my website and I was like deep into WordPress craziness. <laughs> if anybody knows that. <laughs> and I was like, some level of WordPress stuff was telling me I needed to have an email provider. And I was trying to connect, you know, the convert kit Gmail thing. I was anyway, I don't want to go down a hole there, but rabbit hole, but I'm um, just saying that it wasn't intentional, but it was a good switch because now it's like, there's other things that then I can add on to learn more about conversions and forms and all of those things as I build my understanding around web development and web because my website can like then integrate with this much easier than ConvertKit can basically is what I'm getting at there. Sorry, tangent. Okay. So that was the process. Does anybody have questions or conversation feedback on the process? I think this this is a great um, a great start. I mean, this is pretty comprehensive. Um, just and and you still have more to do, but this is this is great. Cool. Awesome. I'm glad I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. looking good. I would say to this step, one of the things I would love to see added is uh, where you identify when you're going to do the different things. So. After 24 hours, I'm going to do X. After one week, I'm going to do Y. You're so excited about the plan that we can't, we have to get to it now. <laughs> the plan. So the plan is about how am I actually, okay, I figured out what onboarding is. I figured out my method. I know my process. I know like how I want to do everything. I know the steps. Now I have to put it into action, right? So the plan is literally putting it into action. It's when am I going to do this? And it's, I, I can expand on this, I'm sure, but I did, this was late at night again. I'm so I'm just, just going to be honest. Like I put as much as I could it together, but I put the checklist that I promised you because I promised you a checklist. So I put that together. And then there's an example of my onboarding plan that I came up with to, to date. And so those PDFs are there as well as some resources that I use to kind of put these things together. But the checklist, can you still see my screen with the checklist? Yeah? Okay. So the checklist here goes over, again, just clarifying the method and the process of your onboarding, maybe thinking about who, who you're onboarding if, you, if you're not sure yet, if that's not clear, maybe getting more clarity on the actual who of who you're onboarding. Um, what's the best me method for these specific people? If you're actually inviting a specific group of people, have you talked to them about like that method that you're looking at doing for onboarding um, and then giving feedback 
getting feedback from potential members to decide like what kind of content you're creating um, as you're onboarding them. Like, what do they need? Do they need a guide? Do they need a resource? Do they need help? Or is it just like they just chat with you and then they know exactly what they're doing? Who can you ask for support if there's any help that you need through this process of creating your onboarding plan or process? Is there any anybody you could reach out to? Well, you've got this whole community. <laughs> you've got Find Calm here who are all super supportive of you. So um, you can definitely reach out to myself or other people in the Find Calm here community, but there might be other people in your life that know something you don't. I'm sure you have lots of people that know something you don't that you can help with um, for any, any step that you're not sure about. This is just talking about what you're actually learning. And then the motion is talking about the dates. So the dates, what, what, when we're doing this, how are we doing this? How's it going? Um, and then the plan that I created, and I need to be a little bit more specific about my dates to Sandra's point, but I have identified my onboarding method as concierge. I will contact each member or potential member and ask them to schedule a welcome call. So I already have a, if you click on that link, it actually goes to my calendar. And that's a, the welcome call that I've set up for people to schedule time, whether they're a member or not, a find calm here to learn more about what I'm doing in the community and for me to tell them. And hopefully if they're not a member to see, make sure that if they're right for the community to bring them in. Um, to, where was I at? Oh, I was at the other one. I figured out my onboarding process. So um, when a member joins my community, they, the, um, they have reviewed what is included in the membership in the welcome post. So I reiterate, like when they press that buy button, it says there's a whole bunch of things they're going to be able to have access to or to get or to be able to do. And so I'm reminding them of that in the welcome post, as well as like, and most of the people in my community know that my network because they're all my network hosts, but some people in your community might need a little bit more instruction. And so that's where it, it's dependent on like how you're communicating that, whether it's a video or the live event or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm making myself available to them to make sure that um, I answer all their questions when they are, if they're interested in joining the community or after they've joined the community. Um, I wanna do more personalized emails. I've been working on you know how to create more per personalized emails, but I also wanna do an email sequencing for like when I'm doing a discovery call to like warm those people up, to allow them to know about all the opportunities they have to work with me in different various ways. So maybe if they're saying, well, I'm not ready now, they could be ready later, but I wanna figure out how to like keep that conversation kind of going after those calls. So that's what my learning process is. Um, learning the emails that we just talked about was sent, sent in blue. Um, there is, I just found some instructional videos, Carol, on that. Um, that I've bookmarked for myself to look at later. And then I have the dates between July 12th. So next week I'm giving myself the weekend off because uh, I'm going to the beach. And then um, on the 12th uh, through the 23rd, I will be working on creating these um, emails and testing them. These email sequences, how I create that. I'm also going to be putting together templates for everybody who's been asking for templates. So um, I don't have them in here yet but they will be, they will be in here, um, more templates. Um, and then I just wanted to go and we'll just go back to questions then in a second, but the step, the last step is just going beyond the invitation. And that's just talking about the next steps of creating in inclusivity, um, knowing your members, a deep understanding of, of where they want to go in their journey, what they, what they want to accomplish, um, while they're in your, in your community, creating content that would be consumed, like, you know, is it being useful or is it not? And that's just a matter of like asking members. Um, and there's some articles here with links. And then these are the templates that I'm going to put together that I have not done yet, but I will work on in the next week, which are going to be like a customized welcome template. That's not like the boiler muddy networks template. I'd like that to a point, but I feel like it's just not super friendly. So I feel like there's ways to improve that. Um, key terms is a, is something that I just learned about when you're 
communicating with your members, just telling them, here's what these terms mean. If it's something where your community is either um, like a medical community or a specific technical community, or even if it's just a community that you have specific terms for your industry that might not be known by everybody. And just saying, when I say, and, and it can also be, when we say the activity feed, here's what I mean. Here's where the activity feed is. When I say, go to the course section, here's where that is. Um, so in your welcome post, you can have those like key terms just to kind of have them recognize not just how you communicate and how the community communicates with each other as far as if there's specific terminology that you use that might not be familiar to everybody, even if you you could assume that everybody is like, oh, I know exactly what Carol means when she says da da da, but maybe I don't. <laughs> so just to be on the safe side, you could say, here's what I mean when I say this. Um, so those are cool things that I think would be interesting to implement into your welcome. Uh, and then I have a purpose post there template that I'm going to put together um, event plan and checklist for um, group onboarding an event. Like, so you have a checklist before you have your event, you know, like you're all set up, you know exactly what's going to happen during the event. You can have like a a pre-script uh, for yourself and for the members so that they know, think the better organized you are when you have a live event, the better confident you feel and, um, and the members then know like, here's what we're gonna do during the session. So that's really helpful. Um, and then a, a FAQ post, a place for people to ask and get answers to questions. I think that's something that I'd like to incorporate that I haven't done yet in FineCom here. And I think it could be super helpful for a lot of communities, depending on what your topics are, but maybe there's just some uh, beginner's stuff even that you could put in there um, in a FAQ section to just answer. And that could be related to Mighty Networks, like navigation. It could also be just here's, you know, here's the answers to this question. If you have a question about where the resource is, here's where it is. Or if you have a question about um, our, if you want to ask me a question on our live call, here's where you can do that. You can put your question in ahead of time um, in this area. That's one thing I saw somebody do. And I've been trying in the courses that in the guides that I just created, I'm going to stop talking in a second, geez. Um, but in the guides that I created, I want people to comment, to share your thoughts, I think underneath each section and each step, I think it's so incredibly interesting to be able to have that place so that then everybody who's taking this guide will see all of those comments and that you can ask and answer questions and other people can ask and answer questions and you can see who's asked and answered questions or commented about if this was helpful or if it wasn't. And then I, as a host, can then know, because <laughs> I don't know until you tell me if this is helpful, if it's not helpful. Okay. Again, you guys have um, the slide deck. So I want to, we have a few minutes left and I want to see if anybody wanted to share their current onboarding process or, or and if there's anything that they took away from today's session that might help them. I think this is amazing. You did an amazing job. Thank you. It's very helpful. I'm actually, that is my summer project is to revamp my current onboarding um, because my community is growing. Um, currently, my onboarding is um, a three-day email sequence. Uh, when someone joins the community, they the first day they get an email um, that has uh, the video walkthrough that you talked about. Um, and I split, it's six videos, but I split it over three days. And I go over, um, diff, you know, everything they can do in the Mighty Network. And I, I, uh, under each video, I give them like homework. So like the first one is like, you know, create your profile, add your picture, introduce yourself. Um, and then I show them how to do that. And then the next one is like, you know, follow people. And this is why it's important for you to do that. And then I show them how to do that and, and give them homework. Like, okay, now you go in and do that. But I love, 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 um, what you, what you were talking about is the welcome party. Um, because I, I, especially with my community, it's a support group kind of community. It gives us another opportunity where we're not, where usually our, our lessons are like, 
centered around learning something that if we do a welcome party then it's just a matter of us just getting to know this new person get it, letting them get to know us and and go into the community so i'm definitely going to imp implement that that's a great idea and um what i have been what well what the project that we're working on is taking creating new walkthrough videos that are more personalized to what people are asking for um and then but and then adding a, a course because i'm on the business plan as well but creating and i love the word guides i i'm gonna steal that um creating guides where you know peel away kind of like a start here yeah <laughs> so like, like like a start here and then maybe having like the video in there but then also having the written content underneath with screenshots so kind of mixing and matching and then still having the email sequence so they'll have the email sequence, but they can also find it within the Mighty Network if they, you know, have it. And then our last thing, I love, love, love also the FAQ and support template because that's like a quick, you know, you don't have to go through the guides. These are like frequently asked. So you, you're more than likely your quick question is right there. But if you want to go, go more in depth, you can go through the guide. So love that. And I will, I'm looking forward to the templates. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks so much for sharing all the kind words. Please take guides, take anything. My, the, anything that you want to repurpose for yourself, that's the whole point of what I'm trying to do is create things that make your life easier as a Money Network host. Um, I think that we all have unique things to share out in the world. All of our communities are different and awesome in different and awesome ways. So uh, feel free to, um, to repurpose anything how you feel uh, makes sense. Cool. Thank you, Kathy. I'd like to add something. Um, that was super helpful. I, I think one of the biggest takeaways too is like in the welcome party to do uh, breakouts because like not only you, everyone gets to know each other, but you can get to know each other even for two minutes or something on a deeper level. So I'm, I'm definitely going to um, use that one, Deb. And I just wanted to share something that I did with um, an artist community. They were, um, you know, admittedly not very tech savvy, and we did a welcome party where I led um, really the navigation, you know, just like, here's how you post, here's how you turn out the notifications and, you know, all the important things. And it was just helpful to do it live because then they could ask questions that I didn't even think um, to add, you know, they were like, well, how if we comment, you know, how does this work? And I was like, oh, that's a great question. And then so I added that in. So um, I think, you know, along with the welcome party, depending on your level of people, you know, adding in a little bit about how to move around and navigate. Thanks. Thanks, Joanne. I was just going to say a quick, uh, an alternative to creating a video where your face is visible. Uh, I was just experimenting the other day with PowerPoints where you can add, record your voice on a PowerPoint presentation. So you could throw in screenshots, record your voice with a walkthrough and post that as a video. You export it as an MP4. So good point. That's, that's what allowed me to actually build these guides. I was so resistant to building this thing. I was so nervous. I'm like, you know, all these things are coming up for me. I'm like emotional already right now thinking about how long I wasn't going to do any of this stuff until December. I'm like, I don't have time and I'm not ready. And then one of like Joanne's things is launch before you're ready. And so uh, what allowed me to do that was I used loom, loom and I don't have my video on at, on any of those videos. None of my videos on it's my little icon photo. So that way I didn't have to worry about what I look like each day that I worked on this. If it was 10 o'clock at night and I was tired, nobody knew that unless you're watching the replay and you hear me saying it. Um, but that allowed me to, to push through and to do this. And I know that it's going to change. And I know that getting feedback from people is going to help me. But I think, and then when Kathy, I wanted to just go back to what Kathy was saying about um, the interaction and like having it be fun. 
And that's a variety of ways. It doesn't have to be just one way. It could be a multiple combination of a couple of different ways, because maybe you don't know all of your members and how they learn. And so you try different things and experiment with, okay, has anybody responded to the video? Well, maybe, yeah, that's cool. Like everybody loves the video or maybe no, they, and even just, I talk about this in my recorded videos, but just knowing your members and how they um, communicate, like, do they look on the desktop app or are they looking on the mobile all the time? Those are two different experiences. That's one thing I talk about a couple of times before is that I did a demo for a client for her community when I was a community manager last year on the desktop, we did it. And then we realized that all of our people are on mobile. <laughs> We're like, oh, that's not gonna work too well, is it? So like even knowing those little things makes a super big difference when you're thinking about onboarding. Um, and so I go into a little bit more detail like in these sections. So please check out the guide um, in FineComp here because there's a lot more, like I said, resources. And um, I will be putting up those templates hopefully here in the next week that I'll put some things together for everybody. So you guys can check those out. Give me feedback, please. I am working on taking criticism. It's been a, always my lifelong challenge of I don't like criticism <laughs> and I get very defensive. Um, so I apologize to anyone if I've been defensive for criticism, but thank you um, so much for giving me that because it's just going to make this, this space and what I'm doing even better. You don't show up that way. You really don't. You, you honestly don't. You take criticism very, very well. In fact, you invite it too much. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop asking. I'll just tell you okay. all my stuff is awesome and you don't need to tell me otherwise. Right. <laughs> I think you've been really courageous, especially over the last few months. I mean, you've created so much stuff and you've been asking for tons of feedback and that takes a yeah. lot of courage. So it, it, it does. Well, thank you. I want to um, just end by, by saying thank you again to all of you for um, always showing up. As Carol mentioned, over the past year, it's been about a year now since we started the Mighty Mastermind, which wasn't called the Mighty Mastermind really until September, um, but we were doing it um, basically in, since May, June, I think, um, every week. So it's just been an that's how you can create amazing connections. And that's how I discovered this whole new journey. So thank you so much um, for your continued support. Please check out the guide. There's lots of events. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there's tons of events in FineCom here. Joanne and I are partnering on an event to get you published in global, what is it? Thrive Global. And what was the other one, Joanne? Thrive Global and Authority Magazine. Authority Ariana Magazine. So if, yeah. So if you want to get yeah. out there and I really just realized, Joanne, that I need this is this is the work I need to do now because I need to expand past the money networks. I consulted with a um, business strategist this week as like a partnership through the Small Business Association, and the the one thing he said was, "You really need to, to diversify from money networks, like because if money networks goes away, is your business still a business?" And I said, "Yeah." But I, I need to get out there and, and really be promoting it much more in other places than many hosts. Right, right. Well, you will get you and others will get a lot of mileage out of being in these publications. So we'll we're gonna talk through it next Friday. Awesome. Really excited. So will you guys yeah. set a date um, next Friday when you talk as to uh, when you're gonna uh, try to do the workshop? Oh uh, it is no, it is next Friday. I thought, um, it's, Right? I didn't see anything in the events. You're doing it next Friday? Um, yeah, there, there was an event. Right, Deb? Yeah. <laughs> so just to show you, um, the Get Published is on Friday, July 16th. Oh, there it is. OK, I missed it totally. Yeah, that's OK. Um, okay. Like I said, there's tons of events. Um, I have the introduction to the guide on, on the 15th. We're doing that getting published on the 16th. I have the Mighty Monday Tech and Strategy on the 19th. The 21st is that workshop. Some people had requested about having an expert speaker come in to talk about community marketing because I did a marketing workshop for you guys um, back in the beginning of the year with the Mighty Mastermind, but 
I was, I'm not a marketing expert and this person is, and she's worked with some really high level companies. Um, Her resume is incredible. And she's in my CMX mastermind that I'm in that we meet on a monthly basis. And so she is, was on, was honoring us by giving us some time. So her and I talked uh, two days ago and she's confirmed to do that. So we're having a, a, mar- a community marketing workshop. All these will be recorded. So I know that there's a lot this month, like I said. And then the tech and um, tech integration, talking about how to really connect all of the tech in, and make it work for you in your, your workflow with Money Networks is on the 22nd. We have our Business of Belonging book club since we're continuing with the Business of Belonging at the end of the month on the 28th. So those are all the events for July. Okay, I see two for intro to the Com Guide to Launching a Mighty Network, Thursday, yes. July 15th. Why, why are there two listed there? So there are why two th- because I will answer you. There's one that is in the guide, in the events section of the guide. And there's one that's actually in the Find Calm Here community because not all the people in the Find Calm Here community are okay. in the guide. And so I wanted to make sure I put that in two different places okay. so that everybody had access to that workshop. Okay. Um, going forward, if I have any events for like those things, my plan is that these are all self-study cor- guides, by the way, because the whole point of this is for me to be able to grow and scale my business and my time with this community and figure that out and help more people in, in a broader way. So there's not going to be like live events because we already do that in Find Calm here. Like I already have lots of events in Find Calm here. So I don't need to add more events in the guides section. That would be just like overkill. Um, and I do these, you know, Q and A's all the time. So yeah, so there, that's the only reason I wanted to make sure that it was in both places, but the way you're saying that, I'm like, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter um don't want to confuse have, people uh, yeah yeah it's the same zoom link so got it okay so it doesn't matter which one i click on and um rsvp right got it okay perfect anybody else have last thoughts i know we're five minutes over but no well, everybody have a happy friday enjoy your weekend i'm going right, to new jersey you. I will see y'all. I will see y'all next week. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Weekend. Bye. Bye.